Are you ready for another chapter of Let's Play Return to Monkey Island? Well, I hope so. This be your host, Sensei Starman. You might recall that last time we left off, having explored Terror Island thoroughly, but not quite thoroughly enough. We did find a gate leading into the bowels of this hellish place, but no key was readily apparent. Well, it shames me to admit it, but we did overlook this. A silver key right among the innards of this beastie, and it probably would do me good from now on to check with this handy little highlight feature. It's not one of the golden keys, but any key is a good key in my book. So now we have that key. And one other thing that we missed. We did look at all of these horrible skeletons, but we noticed, or did not notice, rather... It looks really old and dry. I think I'll fill up my coat pockets with this bulky firewood. It seems like it might come in handy somewhere. I'm sure no one... And yes, looking at the bones here, I think that these might be the three pirates who used to hang around on the street corner in Melee Island. Who later hung out around the laundromat on a Scab Island in the second game. I've had it with locks. It's not a skeleton key, but I did find it stuck in a... It's nicely dried, pre-cut, and ready to go. You know, the keys gravitate to the top of our inventory. And because we already lit our lantern, we don't have to do it here. Thus avoiding another pointless puzzle. It says, warning, you are about to enter a maze of twisty passages mostly very similar. Now, I must admit to one thing. Uh, I originally did come here playing through this to do a pre-run before filming, and I completely and totally skipped a puzzle. Hand to goodness, I was able to somehow navigate this maze without the way you're supposed to navigate the maze. Just sheer, random, blind wandering led me to the end. You may not believe me, but it is true. Anyway... What you're supposed to do is wander this maze, hither and yon, until you start finding these notes. Looks like someone forgot to pick up their trash. And so intent was I upon getting through this, I did not notice this trash. But you're supposed to keep going until you find five pieces of this. And they appear to be pages from a book. His major voyage quest nearing completion. Reginald's nose tasted spring coming once again upon the sea's breezes. Oh, for land to be ho again. Those crisp fall nights at sea, this ship undulated, wet and rocking, and yet in the bunks below decks no one was knocking. Spring sprung hard, the flowers yawned wide, the bees dove in. Knowing he must sail away the next season on his major voyage, of course he tried and failed to keep it casual. Their last summer night together was torrid and lurid. The night was long, but insufficiently so, because morning came too soon when he must set sail. Every ocean, sunrise and moonrise reminds me of you, those dual orbs dancing in the winter sky, he mused, pen in hand. So yes, the trick here is if you read through these notes, you'll note that two of them mention spring, one mentions summer, one mentions fall, and one mentions winter. And they have these little symbols here. So nearing completion, this one comes last. So we start off with spring, summer, fall, winter, and then the second spring one. Of course, we have to be at the start of the maze for that to make any sense. But thankfully, there is a quick way out. And you note that that strange sign we found before is now glowing. And I remembered a bit too late why XYZZY seemed familiar. XYZZY. Now you may recall in the last video I said that XYZZY wow, neat. It's magic. seemed like a reference to the game Zork. Well, actually it goes a little bit further than that. I looked it up and found out that XYZZY was a spell in Colossal Cave Adventure, one of the first computer games ever made, and it was a spell that allowed the player to instantly travel between two otherwise distant points. It has since then become a 
catch-all phrase in a lot of different programs and websites. It's a bit of a programming joke. They have, in fact, named an Adventure Game Award uh, for Interactive Fiction after it, the XYZZ Award. But uh, if you type it into Zork, uh, produces the response. A hollow voice says, Fool. Same thing happens in a bunch of other Infocom games. <clears throat> and there are some other things that happen in other games. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons Online had a monster named XYZZY. The game Road Rash has as a cheat code. Deus Ex, uh, at one point, if you're trying to hack a computer, you'll try it if you haven't already gotten the password as a bit of a joke. And here, it allows us to get out of this maze. So we can more easily start this puzzle over. So, looking at this, first one is Spring Sprung Hard, that little X symbol which is back here. So let's see. The summer one is right here. The last summer night it has a little teacup type thing. All right, fall has something that looks like an eye, an omega. So we have this one. Winter has that little diamond symbol. And finally, the last one. Let's see, is Major Voyager near completion? A little hashtag mark. And here we go, gaze in the water. It looks really deep. Jump in the water. Okay. Here goes. Oh no, the lamp is going out. I should have seen that coming. Water, fire. And of course, it notes in our inventory that these matches, where the heck are the matches? Well, the matches are not in fact uh, waterproof. There we go. Yeah, no luck left. It's the pirate's life for me. It won't light underwater. Nope. Nope. Okay, so we can't go anywhere unless we figure out a way to make this lamp light underwater. This is the point where Elaine usually rescues me. X, Y, Z, Z, Y. S-O-S. <laughs> that was a close one. I'll have to remember that fire doesn't burn underwater. So clearly the answer is we must find a fire that will burn underwater. Uh, there's no such thing as a man-eating mushroom, right? Thing is, this is one of those puzzles we... It's getting hard to tell the flora from the fauna. This is one of those puzzles where the game gave us a subtle clue earlier on. You might recall earlier that when we were on LeChuck's ship, they said that for uh, as lazy as Flambe is as a lookout, his demon fire does make him handy when it came time to do ship repair underwater. So what we have to do is sneak back hither. I'm sure he won't mind if I borrow some demon fire. So, now that we have a demon fire lamp, which is oddly red-tinted, it said, several twisty passages later, yeah, they do not make us go through all that again. It looks re Okay. Here goes. Looking at these ribs is making me hungry. 
Yeah, somebody forgot their bones. And yeah, that little yeah, flower is glowing. Somebody forgot their bones. It says, warning, it's a long way... Oh! Lucky thing you landed on my bed! Herman Toothrot? I think so. It's been a while. Names do funny things when you're not using them. Okay, for those of you who don't remember or are watching this having not seen my other Monkey Island game playthroughs, Herman Toothrot was the captain who originally went to Monkey Island and was the sole occupant of the island apart from the cannibals back in the first Monkey Island game. He showed up later on Deke Island in the second game and in something that is apparently no longer held canon, uh, Escape from Monkey Island revealed that he was Elaine's grandfather, the original Captain Marley. But that apparently isn't canon anymore from what I've heard from other sources. So, apparently he's now trapped here, shipwrecked again. How have you been? Meh. Have you been in this cave very long? Well, not in geologic terms. As a percentage of the total number of years of existence of the cave itself, it would be a small number. On a human scale, however, yes! It all depends on your perspective. How does a person get out of this place? Typically, you don't. Are you freaked out by all the weird screaming in the caves? Oh, that's me. Just a little light entertainment and well-being work. Primal screaming is very therapeutic. Uh, try it. Ah! Whew, you're right. Yeah, that feels good. I'm looking for a golden key. Sounds like something I might have read in a book once. Are you a fictional character? Not that I'm aware of. Can I get you anything? Out would be nice. What are all these scribbles? My neo-utilitarian manifesto! Nice view. Why, thank you! Did this used to be a lamp? Yeah, it ran out of oil after I'd been here about three days, and then it got a little broken. I've been using it to catch rats. I wouldn't climb that if I were you. The loud scorpions live up that way. Ever since they ate all the giant spiders? Of course, the spiders only came around to eat all the eelworms and megapedes. These are big, flat rocks. Couldn't you have made the bed out of something else? They're the softest rocks I could find. At least there's a little moss on them. Eh, there would be more. But it tastes good and makes good earplugs. Possibly, but not necessarily in that order. Climb that if I were you. Of course, this. Do you catch much with that? Ah, don't call him that. He doesn't like it. His name is Carl. Carl the Rat Trap. The needs of the many may outweigh the needs of the few, but do the few needs of the many outweigh the many needs of the few? The needs of the few sometimes outweigh the needs of the many, but the weight of the many outweighs the weight of the few. It's a golden key. What did this used to be? That's the cover of a book I was reading. At the end of the plank. And we just got an achievement for Bookworm. Apparently we just found the last copy of this in the game that we needed to find. Tell me more about At the End of the Plank. It's a solid, if somewhat predictable, story about a roguish pirate and a doomed romance with a woman of station. I ate the pages long ago, but before my lamp ran out, I memorized quite a bit of it. Want to hear a quote? Sure. Reginald unfurled the perfumed missive and slid his eyes along it. Oh, my lovely privateer, lend me your most private ear. And so it continued saucily. Stirring. Now, stirring something. 
Many of the many wait for the few, but a few of the few do not wait for the many. The few are in the way of the many, and the many in the way of the few. Many of the many make the many more, while a few of the few make the few fewer. A few of the many are the few. Too few many, too many few, or the other way around. Footwear is the enemy of compassion. Souls do not promote souls. Government should be humble, like a good cheese. The best way to choose leadership is by random lot. The best way to assign blame is the same. Idle hands make light work. Cast off your chains and replace them with shackles. Teaching a man to fish is less useful if he lives in a cave without fish. The rock is the foot of the stage. The foot is the stage of the philosopher. Recipe for no bowl rock soup. Put rock in mouth. Swallow saliva. The largest population which can be governed harmoniously is one. And even then, only sometimes. The time for action is now, unless you're trapped at the bottom of a cave. At which point you can just sit around reading manifestos. Free will is an illusion, especially when you're trapped at the bottom of a cave. If a man is trapped at the bottom of a cave and he screams, does he hear himself? I wish the neighbors would quiet down. Note to self, stalactite has a C for ceiling, stalagmite has a G for ground. I hope rocks cannot feel pain. I can't believe I'm running out of writing space already. The rock is the foot of the stage. The foot is cast off your chick. The largest population which can be governed her. If a man is trapped at the bottom, cast off your chick. I can't believe many of them. The rock is so Herman. Can I get you anything? Out would be nice. I wouldn't climb that if I were you. Of course. I hope rocks can. How have you been writing this without a lamp? I haven't. This is all from my first three days down here. It's very impressive, in a creepy, frightening sort of way. Thanks. I'm in talks with publishers. It's very impressive. Thanks. Well. No touching! You were hunting for the keys, too. That's how you got stuck here. Is it? I suppose that would make sense. That's a golden key! Maybe... it's mine. Let's make a deal for the key. I'm pretty sure I wanted it for a reason, but... a decade or so in a dark cave can do funny things to your memory. So, get me out of here, and then I'll let you have the key! How do I know I can trust you? I don't know. How do I know I can trust you? I don't know. How do I know I can trust you? I don't know. How do I know I can trust you? Me having the key is for the greater good. For the greater good of you, certainly. How do I know I can trust you? I don't know. How do I know I can trust you? And there may be an achievement for if you let me have the key, saying this I'll repeatedly. The key. That sounds good. As long as it's escape first, key afterward. It needs to be key first, then escape. It needs to be escape first, then key. Just give me the key already. No! Give me the key! No! Oops. I'm eager to see how you're going to get us out of here now. I wish I could see it. Well. X, Y, Z, Z, Y. Well, that wasn't so hard. What happened to Mr. Toothrot? When? Did you get him out of the cave? How'd you do it? That's not part of this story. Oh, okay. Yep, I left him behind in the cave, but I got a key. It's a little dirty, but still one of the most beautiful keys I've ever seen. Uh, there's no such thing as a man-eating mushroom, right? Of course, now I have to walk back along the twisty path to get out of here. At least it lets me run. Meanwhile... Report! Alive? 
How is that possible? Someone saw him talking to an old crone on Low Street. I confirmed it myself. I'm more concerned about the crone than Threepwood. Who is she? Just some old bag of bones. Don't worry about her. I took care of her. Excellent. She did have a key on her. A big, fancy gold one. Do you want it? No, no. We don't need the keys. We have a better way. Just put it where Threepwood won't get it. Like where? I don't care! Use your imagination! Yes, Captain. Now, I have another task for you. You'll need to pick up a few things from our ship on the way. Alright, we're one key down. Even though it's probably crazy to go here after everything else. Finished the new book yet? No. As far as I can tell, it has no end. Some stories are better off that way. It's fantastic. Why do I get the feeling that may be foreshadowing? Remind me why Flambe still has a job. He doesn't do anything. He's handy to have around when we have to fix things below the waterline at night. And yeah, there's that subtle hint. Hang in there, Bob. Still not funny. These open plan offices are all the rage now. Stop overfeeding Molly, you rotten clods. She has digestive trouble and I'm tired of cleaning it up. Reminder to all crew, extinguish demon fire with the proper extinguishment. Other methods will not work. And that being another subtle hint about how to get a fire that'll work to get past that one puzzle. Hello! Unexpected, but welcome. And yeah, I came here on the off chance that, you know, there'd be something in the Quartermaster's quarters that would help us figure out what we were supposed to be doing. Sure enough, that sign about not overfeeding Molly. I wonder what it's made out of. I wonder what it's made out of. Yeah, I'm presuming that that chicken is named Molly. Yikes. Yeah, we can't grab it. But walk away after feeding it. come this far without being pecked to death by ghost chickens. Keep your expectations modest, I always say. I'm debating whether to include this story in my memoirs right about now. But we have a second key. It's one of the most beautiful keys I've ever seen. Meanwhile... So, the Swabi says, the mop or the bucket? Ha ha ha! There are so many other things I could be doing right now. Why is that spell taking so long? Relax. Lila knows what she's doing. My mother always used to say, good pizza takes time. That's idiotic. Are you insulting me or me mama? Yes. Now this seems worthwhile. Sword on a gun. Uh, I don't think that's worthwhile. But... That has gotten us our second key. And I think we have everything we need to get a third one, so we just need to sail back to Bermuda. Because you might recall that the Town Hall and the rooms of the various challenges, there was one that was very conspicuously uh, not lit. I can feel all the warmth escaping up the chimney. Thankfully, we now have some firewood. And we have some matches. And we've now got this empty bucket. It's loud about every 15 seconds. Like my Uncle Ernie. 
Now we had 20 seconds to do that challenge, you might recall. I will return in 20 seconds to grade your papers. Your time starts now. Wait for it. Time's up. I'll take your papers. Hmm. Hmm? I am most surprised by this, but the evidence is clear. Mr. Threepwood is the winner. But how is that possible? Clean living, regular exercise, and a brain like a mountain. Dense, motionless, and shaped by erosion. You can see the difficulty I'm having. I can. Better luck next time. And so... Citizens of Bermuda, Mr. Guy Bruce Threewood, Esquire, has somehow successfully bested our beloved Queen Odina at all three of our traditional challenges. We are gathered to complete an orderly and peaceful transfer of power. Should I sit on the throne or something? There are some customary vows. Vows? Nobody mentioned any vowing. Will you faithfully uphold the honor and dignity of Bermuda in your every thought and deed? Honor and dignity? The queenship is not an a la carte position. Okay, sure. And will you promise to enforce and obey the laws of Bermuda? Eh, can I ask about the obey part? C can I ask about the obey part? I mean, if I'm queen... The queen is also a citizen. How many of these vows are there? Not many. Fine, I'll do it. Do you swear to defend and protect the people of Bermuda, sacrificing your own life or limbs if necessary? Um, it's starting to sound like a trap. This is starting to sound like a trap. It's just standard contractual language. Okay, I guess I'm in. And will you gracefully accept all challenges to your hardiness, your seriousness, and your intelligence? Now, wait a minute. Is there a flex time option? I have other commitments. You may sleep between the hours of 11 and 4. Oh, all right. Very well. Citizens of Bermuda, your new queen, Skybrush Threepwood. Congratulations. If you want my advice, I... Give me the crown already. I hope you like spending all your time doing the three challenges. Because that's basically what your job is now. I have to write my memoirs. Gasp! Um, as your queen, I've decided to reshape the government as a worker-owned collective. That's why I've symbolically destroyed the crown. Why don't you all take a key? You get a key. And you get one. And you! Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got places to be. Now that I'm queen, I'm having the castle deep cleaned, with plenty of boiling hot water. That should do it. It's one of the most beautiful keys I've ever seen. Alright, so we now have a third key. And I'll bet that there's probably going to be another video when we leave the island. But I will go ahead and see about that next time. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you then.